Hello and welcome to another episode of the Molecular Cell Biology YouTube channel. Today we're going to be addressing how you map the DNA sequences that modulate transcription of a gene. And in order to start, let's remember what those sequence elements can be. The first sequence element that can modulate transcription is what we refer to as the core promoter. And without a core promoter, you will have no transcription. So therefore, one easy way to, to identify a core promoter element is by identifying a specific DNA sequences that when they are eliminated, they bring transcription down to nothing. So that will be what we will uh, signal as a minus sign. The second type of DNA sequences that regulate transcription are those that increase transcription above basal levels. And those are the so-called cis-actin sequences. Cis-actin sequences will increase transcription beyond basal levels. So they will bring transcription up to two or three crosses of activity. So when they are eliminated, what you will see is a decrease in transcription activity. Now, the third sequence element are the so-called enhancers. And whenever you have an enhancer, you bring transcription up to maximum levels that are possible. And that's what we have indicated as five crosses of activity. So an easy way to identify where an enhancer is located is by identifying sequences that when eliminated, they bring transcription down from five crosses. And the final element is what we refer to as silencers. And silencers sequences are those that have the ability to dampen or decrease overall transcriptional output. So when a silencer is eliminated, we typically see an increase in transcriptional activity. And that's simply because silencers decrease transcription. So if you eliminate a silencer, then you end up with increased transcription. All right, so let's address a very specific example to see if, if this actually makes more sense. So here we have a region a genomic sequence that is represented in the first part of this figure that represents the upstream sequences and the downstream sequences that are located around a particular gene. And the idea here is we want to map whether there are regulatory sequences located in those upstream and downstream sequences. The actual gene has been substituted by a reporter gene. So in this particular case, it has been substituted by GFP, the green fluorescent protein. And the output, the transcriptional output is being measured in the form of crosses. So in this particular case, when you have all of the different sequence elements present, you end up with only one cross, meaning there is just basal levels of transcription going on. All right, so let's, let's start trying to figure out how this sequence is working. So in order to do that, one easy approach to do is let's actually take care of the sequences that are located upstream first. So for starters, let's kind of ignore everything that is located downstream and let's focus only on the upstream sequences. And in order to do that, it's probably good to start with one construct that contains only the sequences that are located upstream, and that is construct number 10. In this case, we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. All of them sequences are located upstream from the reporter sequence. And let's compare that with another construct that might differ from this one only by the presence or absence of only one segment. And that is construct number two. Let's compare those two. Because the only difference between these two is that one lacks the sequence identified as A, the other one contains A. And if we compare those two constructs, we see that at the level of transcription, one of them contains no transcription activity, the other one contains no transcription activity at all. So both of them have the same uh, transcription activity and that is negative. So A is very likely to have no activity. Now A is located upstream, so therefore A will be an upstream sequence with no transcriptional activity. All right, moving forward. The next construct that might be a good comparison will be construct number three, because between two and three there is only one difference and that is the presence or absence of B. So in two, you have B. In construct number three, you don't have B. And you see that when you eliminate B, now the main difference is that you go from having no transcriptional activity to having three crosses of transcriptional activity. So 
eliminating B increases transcriptional activity, which means B is a silencer. Because when we eliminate a silencer, we increase transcriptional activity. So B is a silencer. OK, so moving forward, now we have A and B. Now, if we compare 3 and 4, we should be able to figure out the activity associated with segment C. So here we have three crosses in the presence of segment C. And when segment C is eliminated, now we have only two crosses of transcriptional activity. That means that C is a cis-acting sequence because it increases transcription. It has the ability to increase the output of transcription for that particular reporter gene. OK, so now C is a cis-acting sequence. Let's keep moving. So now, in order to figure out the activity of B, we have to search for a good comparison for this particular construct. And we have one down here. So if we compare 4 with 11, the only difference between th those two constructs is that one contains D, the other one lacks D. So that should allow us to figure out what D does. And if you eliminate D, you go from having two crosses to having two crosses again. So therefore, D is not affecting transcriptional outcome, transcriptional output, which means D is, again, one of those upstream sequences with no transcriptional activity. OK, so I'm, I'm abbreviating it by saying TA, no TA, no transcriptional activity. All right, so that's sequence D. Now, moving forward. We will need to that now figure out E, F, G, and H. Um, if we compare 11, we can compare 11 now with construct number 5. Because again, the only difference is the, the presence or absence of only one segment. So in 11, we have E. But in construct number 5, we don't have E. E is absent in that construct. So now we see that we go from having two crosses of transcriptional activity to having only one cross of transcriptional activity. So therefore, the elimination of E is rendering the construct less transcription active, which implies that segment E has to be another cis acting sequence. All right, and now we have F, G, and H. So to figure the activity of those, it might be probably ideal to try to find one that has only one difference. Um, now, I don't really see any good match, but construct number nine is very similar. And the only difference between five and nine is that F is missing. Well, there is also segment I, but segment I doesn't seem to be affecting anything. You have one cross, you have only one cross on construct five, and you have only one cross on construct nine. So that indicates that chances are I is not affecting anything. Um, and the elimination of F is also not having any effect whatsoever. So F will also be an upstream sequence, sequence with no transcriptional activity. All right, and now we have G and H. So if we look at this construct, construct number six, we notice that construct six contains segment H, but has no transcriptional activity whatsoever. You get A minus when you measure transcriptional activity. So therefore, H will be an upstream sequence with no transcriptional activity. And that means that segment G is the core promoter. All right, now that we have figured out everything that is located upstream from the reporter sequence, we can move on to the downstream sequence. And we have a few constructs here that can be very helpful when it comes down to that. Um, so I'm deleting some of the errors that I have made in the past just to simplify things. And now we're going to focus our attention on the downstream sequences. So inspecting fairly quickly, we see that we have at least three constructs that could be very informative. And let's start then with comparing construct 7 with construct 8. So we already know that G is the core promoter, so we should have transcription. And when we have K, uh, we have five crosses. When we eliminate K, which is missing in construct number 8, 
we still have five crosses. So therefore, K doesn't seem to have any effect. The elimination of K has no consequence in terms of transcriptional output. So therefore, K would be a downstream sequence with no transcriptional activity. All right, and now we can compare construct eight with construct nine. The only difference between those two is that J, segment J has been eliminated going from eight to nine. So J is absent in nine. And we see that go, we go from having five crosses of transcriptional activity to having only one cross in construct nine. And that indicates that segment J is the enhancer. So J is the enhancer. And with that, we have done the entire mapping. We have already indicated that I was probably not active, not really able to provide any activity. And to do that, we can see that in the last construct, construct nine, uh, even though you have I, um, you don't have other anything other than basal transcript levels. And that's because the only thing that you have is core promoter and sequences that have no transcriptional activity. So sequence I, is a downstream sequence with no transcriptional activity. All right, and with this, we have done the entire mapping for the entire uh, region of DNA. And I hope that this will help clarify your different ideas related to how DNA sequences can modulate uh, transcriptional output and how we do the mapping of those different uh, DNA sequences that can regulate transcriptional activity. I hope you find this video helpful. And if you do, give this video a thumbs up. And remember to follow my channel.